What is up, New Beginnings Church? Happy Thursday morning to you, and welcome to this devotion series through the Gospel of Luke. Um, yes, you, if you're watching instead of listening here, your eyes do not deceive you. My bookshelf is gone, and I'm in a different room. This is actually a filming studio, so uh, I thought I'd shoot from in here today because the cameras and lights were already set up. So I may be back in here later. I might go back to the bookshelf. I don't know. But anyway, hey, if you're reading along, we're in Luke chapter 5. I'm going to pick up at verse number 33. They said to him, Jesus. And John's disciples, well, we notice they fast and pray often, and so do the disciples of the Pharisees, but your disciples, they go on eating and drinking. And Jesus answered, Can you make the friends of the groom fast while they're with them? But the time will come when the groom will be taken from them, and in those days they will fast. Uh, I'll just pause right there. You know, if you've been around New Beginnings for any length of time, you know we believe in fasting. We believe that that's actually the best way to start your year. I mean, think about it. God is first and highest of all. There's the principle of first that's woven all throughout the scriptures. So we believe, hey, let's give God the first part of our morning in devotion to him. Let's give God the first portion of our week by being at church on Sunday. And then we believe, hey, let's give God the first portion of our whole year by doing 21 days of prayer and fasting. But here's the deal. We should be fasting routinely, regularly. Um, every once in a while, God will put it on my heart if we're praying for something. If the church has you know, maybe got something intense going on that week, I'll just say, hey, guys, we're, we're fasting, we're praying. I know we did that during uh, the purchase of our building. There were times things were intense and negotiations, and we just felt like we wanted people praying and fasting. Because what you see is, is that wherever people are praying and fasting, you see breakthrough. And all throughout the scriptures, you see this. And fasting was not something that was considered something that you maybe did. Uh, it wasn't something that you just considered to the spiritually elite. No, everybody fasted. That's why in the Sermon on the Mount, when Jesus addresses fasting, he doesn't say if you fast, he says when you fast. Meaning to Jesus, fasting would have been a normal part of your rhythm and routine to life. And I think that's such a huge idea. What if you built fasting in to your rhythm? For some of you, that might be once a week. For maybe others, every other week, at least maybe once a month or every other month. I mean, something like that, some type of regular ongoing fasting. And here's why. The first thing is that fasting has incredible health benefits. Um, there's all the latest in biohacking your body to get your body to perform better. And at the top of that list uh, from scientists is it's good to fast. It's actually good for you to shut your whole digestive system down and give it a total rest, to let it flush out, clean out, rest. And then again, what happens is the healing agents in your body start to activate as you're fasting. And so I think this is why we've even told people, hey, if you've never fasted before, start somewhere. Maybe you're just doing what's called intermittent fasting, which is maybe where you would only be fasting for 16 hours straight. Some people fast from, you know, from sunup till sundown. That's a lot easier in the winter though, by the way, isn't it? Um, some people can, can go a full 24 hours with water only and good for them. And of course, I know people in our church that have really um, developed the practice of fasting and they've gone two, three, four, five days even. And so I want you to know, not only is it possible, it's good for you. And so when you start getting into the rhythm of fasting, it becomes natural. It gets a little bit easier. And then you actually realize the benefits of it because not only are there unbelievable health benefits, but we know that there's benefits to our mind and our emotions. And so some of you are struggling with your mental health right now, whether it's depression or anxiety or something like that. You're dealing with these emotions of maybe anger or bitterness. And I'm telling you this, Take that stuff to fasting. Make it rhythmic, part of your life, built into your schedule. But if you've got something pressing in your life, you say, no, no, I'm going to attack this thing with fasting. And so during that fast, I'm going to pray. I'm going to really meditate on the scriptures and seek God to help me with that thing. And again, the, what you have to remember is, is that spirit, soul, and body are all very intertwined. So as the, you get the health benefits from fasting, and then as you get the soul benefits of fasting, now we get to that third level is you get spiritual benefits of fasting, which is now you really get to, if you get it, because I know some people, they'll go like, well, I fasted, Todd, but I was angry, or I fasted and I was just hungry all day. That's because it's so new to you. If it's a part of your rhythm and routine, your body will recognize it. And be like, oh, we're doing that fasting thing? All right, let's do it. And then all of a sudden, 
you're really reaping the spiritual benefits of it. You can quiet the mind. You can, you can quiet the emotions. The body's not going to yell at you anymore. And now you can truly, I think, tune out the noise and hear the voice of God. I want to encourage you today. Fasting is powerful and has the power to change your life. If you don't believe me, go look up all the scriptures where you see the great men and women of faith fasting. And when they fasted, they saw breakthrough. So I'm just going to let you know, when they were talking in this moment saying, hey, they fast, they fast, but Jesus, your disciples don't fast. He goes, oh, hold on. I'm here right now, but once I'm gone, oh, they will fast. Well, church, let me tell you, the time is now. Jesus has risen. Jesus is Lord, and it is time to fast. Fasting for breakthrough in your life, in my life, in the church, in our families, in our finances, whatever it takes, let us fast and really push out the noise of this world so we can sense the presence of God in our lives. Church, I love you so much. God bless you, and I will see you tomorrow.